In this tutorial, we're going to talk about emoticon event text tags and uh, punctuation event text tags. And we're going to start by seeing what adding a simple one character punctuation mark that is not a phrase, a question, a question mark, exclamation point, or period. So this ampersand is an example. It's one character long. Um, and we'll reanalyze our audio file and take a look at what that did. And it created a punctuation events group ampersand animation. If I double click on it, I'll create it. Um, and I've got uh, the same curve that I uh, created before in my clipboard, the angry curve that's one second long. I'm just going to paste it in there uh, and go back to my main animation uh, and select the angry curve. And I'll see what happened here is that we created an ampersand, you know, the ampersand punctuation event group. And it is about uh, the duration scale is exactly one, and so we've got a one second long uh, bump in the angry curve there. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, duration scale that's, uh, it's just a single punctuation mark, so it's not uh, attached to anything, and that's why the duration scale is one. Now, if I wanted to, let's say, have the duration scale match a phrase, uh, I could do uh, an emoticon, and that's where two of these punctuation characters uh, are next to each other, like that. And so now we're going to start here. We're going to end there, uh, and that's going to define our duration scale. I'll save, reanalyze, and we'll see how that impacts our uh, our curve is gone because the animation, the uh, event is no is no longer in the punctuation events group. It's in the emoticon events group. Uh, so I'm going to create that one, uh, and it's also the double ampersand animation. I'll paste my curves. And now I'll take a look at what that did. And you can see we've stretched out the curve a little bit. Um, I could stretch it out all the way. Let's say I brought this all the way back to the beginning of the animation. Um, maybe I'll get rid of the double exclamation marks, which also uses the angry curve. Uh, I'll save and reanalyze. And we'll see we have a very long, big, angry curve throughout our entire animation uh, with this one emoticon. Uh, and you can see how angry he gets. And let's say he gets a little too angry. One trick we can do is we can use two digits. Uh, so we'll say 05, and that's going to reduce it by half. You can go 05 to, uh, you know, 99 uh, for almost a 10 times multiplier. So this is a half. Um, the two digits are basically the decimal is uh, uh, in between the two in between the two digits. Uh, and that signifies that this is a, a magnitude scale multipl multiplier. So when I reanalyze, now I've got a, a, a more subtle uh, angry curve uh, using, using that emoticon. Now, another trick to do know is that uh, if I wanted to, this to work like the ampersand, the single ampersand, um, you know, I wanted, you know, I didn't want any duration scaling. Uh, what I can do is I can add the second closing tag right after the opening tag. And what that's going to do is create a duration scale of one, essentially no duration scaling. Um, and so there's only so many, you know, combinations of a single uh, punctuation character that's not a phrase event. And so there's only so many animations that you could create uh, that are not scaled. And this lets you um, create a lot more. And these won't be scaled if you use them like this, where the opening and closing tags uh, with no words uh, or anything in between them. Uh, and so that's the uh, uh, emoticon event group. Uh, they're scaled by the, the words that are in between them. Uh, you can add a, a magnitude scale multiplier, uh, and you can put them right after each other for a duration scale of one if you prefer.